Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thanks for attending this Monday classroom session. My name is Noah. Sorry for the delay. I was having uh, difficulty launching the webinar. Hopefully it is broadcasting and everybody can hear me. I'm checking the levels right now on my headset. I want to make sure that everybody can hear me. Uh, if you've attended previously, uh, then on the right side of the screen, you should know that you do have the ability to post questions or to enter the chat window. I'm going to give everybody a moment. They're probably getting their coffee still logging in right now. I can see attendees are still joining. I'm going to bring up the PowerPoint. There we are. So the topic, let's go back to the beginning. So this morning, we're going to talk about uh, three specific things. Anywhere, online client card, and scorecard in shortcuts. So with that said, let's bring up my presentation. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so similar to our other Monday morning classroom sessions, this webinar is about 30 minutes. We're going to allow a little bit of time for questions and answers. My microphone is turned on. Everybody else is on mute. Of course, your speakers have to be on, and if you don't hear any audio, that's okay. I'm recording this session, and we will be emailing it to the attendees, so you can review this later. Uh, we can take questions during and, of course, at the end of the presentation. If you use the little uh, chat or the questions bar on the right side of your screen, and of course, if you have any follow-up questions, you can always reach us on our Facebook page, and I will also provide our email at the end of the presentation. So today, what are we talking about? So on today's session, we're going to look a little bit at the Shortcuts Online Services. Three specific things, Anywhere, Digital Forms, and the Scorecard. How to set up Shortcuts Anywhere on your phone or tablet and setting up your staff and security. Using the digital client information cards, and of course, tracking your business information in Scorecard. So how to access the appointment book remotely. There's originally what Shortcuts had was a program called Anywhere. So this is available in your Shortcuts online console. So in the console, most of the people attending are owners, are managers. They should be familiar with the console. One of the buttons in the console is called Anywhere. Normally when you press the Anywhere button, it shows you your particular schedule for that week and only your schedule, your appointments for that week, not necessarily the entire staff. So if you were a salon, if you were a spa or a barbershop that allowed appointments and you want to give your staff permission to look at their appointment book and perhaps even to make appointments for themselves, you want to make sure that they have an account for anywhere. So most of your administrators, you already have an account to access anywhere, but for the rest of your staff, how do you add these people? How do you give them the permission? How do you give them particular levels of permission? So let's go through the process. If you have access to the console, if you want your staff to use anywhere, you're going to go to your site settings button. Once you're in your site settings, you're going to go to manage users on the right side, and then you're going to select add a new user. Now, everything I'm talking about, everything I'm showing in slide form, I'm actually going to review in real time on the web page. So if you're not taking notes or if you want to see how it looks, we're going to see that in just a moment. So then how do you select staff once you go to your anywhere options? So you're going to go to create a user, always use the second option, a user that is a point of sale employee. This is how Shortcuts is able to recognize who the staff member is and what their appointments actually look like because they're associated with somebody. You're going to use the drop down menu to select a particular site if you're a multiple site location. And you're going to fill in some information, usually the email and, of course, a first and last name. So let's actually take a look at the particular windows I'm talking about. So again, this is called Anywhere, and this is if you're going to give your staff 
permission to look at their appointments for the week. So most of you should have access to what's called a console. Now, when you give your staff permission, they do not necessarily see all of these buttons that you currently see. You are administrators. You have access to buttons that nobody else can configure, nobody else can activate. Usually when your staff logs in, the only thing they have access to is called Anywhere. They don't even see the Anywhere button. When they put in their username and their password, Shortcuts automatically shows them their schedule. So if you wanted to give your staff an account, where would you go? On the left side in the center of the screen, you're going to go to Site Settings. Once you're in Site Settings, so this is one of our accounts that we're working with currently, on the right side, we're going to go to Manage Users. And on the right side, we're going to add a new user. So we have two different options when we're creating an account. Create a user that is not associated with a point of sale employee. And this is a little radio button on the left side of the screen. The second option is create a user that is a point of sale employee. For most of you, you will be using the second option. Create a user that is a point of sale employee. Now, the reason that we have the first option is if you have a business partner and this business partner does not have their information, their name set up in the shortcuts point of sale system because they're not a staff member, they're not even front desk, they're just business partners and they'd like to still have access to some schedules or to look at some online reporting, that's where you would use the first option. But for everybody else, always use the second option. So the site. We're going to tell Shortcuts for which site would we like to add an account for. If you were a multiple site owner, you can actually specify the specific place you want to give permissions for. And then on the right side, which specific employee is going to get an account? So normally, this has a list of every staff member's name. For this particular salon I'm working with, everybody already has an account. So I'm just practicing with a pretend person called Shortcuts. Once I choose my site, once I choose my staff member, then I will press the Continue button. So from this window, Shortcuts needs three specific things, three specific piece, pieces of information, an email, a first name and a last name. So the first name and last name are normally populated from your actual Shortcuts point of sale system. At the top, what Shortcuts really needs is an email to put this account under. So once you enter a valid email, then at the very bottom of the screen, this is where you tell Shortcuts what level of permission should this staff member have? Now, you notice there's a lot of checkboxes here, but I'm going to focus on the most important ones. If this employee should be able to look at their appointments for the week and only their appointments for the week, then I would enable the employee checkbox. If I were to press the save button on the top right corner, then this employee would get an email and it will say, this is your username, this is your password to log into anywhere, and you can see your appointment book. And that's it. So here's the catch. Somebody that has employee access does not have permission to make appointments for themselves. They can only look at their appointment book. If this employee should have the ability to see their appointments and make an appointment, then they get two things. They have the employee checkbox turned on and they have appointment operator enabled for them. So now if I were to press the save button and this employee were to get an email, they'd actually be able to make appointments for themselves on the appointment book. But we've got three other checkboxes, site manager, CIC access, site manager restricted. 
we're going to start on the right. Site Manager Restricted. So what does this level do? Site Manager Restricted allows this employee to not only look at their own appointments, but to look at other staff member appointments. Also, it gives them the ability to make appointments on somebody else's schedule. So usually you don't want them to have that permission. That depends on you, on your site. Site Manager Restricted also prohibits them from creating accounts for other staff members or from going into some of your other console settings like Spotlight or Scorecard. So on the far left side, Site Manager would remove those restrictions. A Site Manager has the ability to add other staff member accounts, has the ability to look at other people's appointment books, has the ability to look at your customer surveys, your customer reviews. So very rarely, unless a person is the actual site manager, will they ever get this permission. For 99% of the sites that I work with, usually the only two permissions they get are employee and appointment operator. The third button, CIC access. What CIC stands for is client information card access. So normally, a staff member that has appointment operator permission they can search for a customer. They can find the customer's details, but most of those details are masked. Usually their phone number, their email address, those are usually hidden. There's a bunch of stars and perhaps the last four digits is what they can see. If you give a staff member CIC access, then that means the staff member can bring up the full client card on their device, whether it's a tablet for your salon or it's their own personal cell phone. They can actually use that to access customer information. This includes history notes. This includes visit notes. This also includes the ability to have the customer fill in a custom form. So for most salons that, or most spas, I should say, that have some sort of uh, customer release form, they would give their staff CIC access, but you can limit when they have access to that. And you can limit it during business hours only. That's on the previous window. So usually for spas that have forms for clients, you would give your staff permission to access those forms using CIC access. Okay, so once I choose the levels of permission, if I press save on the top right corner, this employee would get an email, they would log in to the console, and again, instead of seeing all of the console buttons that we currently see, the only thing they would have access to is anywhere, which are their appointments for that week. <clears throat> now, as long as I'm on this window, I'm going to show you under site settings on the left center. If we scroll down, this is where we can tell shortcuts. When does the staff have permission to access the client information card? So is it only during business hours? Is it any time of the day? Or is it during business hours plus perhaps 30 minutes before or 30 minutes after the business closes? So you have the ability to set those permissions for your particular site. Okay, hope that makes sense for everybody. We're going to go back to the presentation. So you'll select the staff. You'll make sure that Shortcuts has their username, which is usually an email, their first name and their last name. Those are three critical pieces of information. And then the level of permission. So are they site managers? Are they employees? Should they have appointment operator permission? Once you press save, they get an email and then they can log in and access whatever you allow them to access. Now, what about Custom client information cards. If you're a salon, if you're a spa, and a customer has to fill out a form, so you do not, uh, you do not any longer have to have some sort of PDF document for them to fill out or a paper form that you're going to file away. So if you want to save on that paperwork, if you want to make sure your client information is a little bit more secure, you can store this electronically. So those that have client information, those that are, have spas, that have forms, you're gonna to go to the client information button and you're going to press the forms button 
on the right side of the screen, then you're going to say create a form. So then you're going to build a custom form. In shortcuts in the console specifically, there are no default generic forms. You have to tell shortcuts, what is the information you need to capture? What are the default fields? Do you want the form to automatically have the customer's first name and last name and phone number? And then do you want the customer to give us some information? Do they have allergies? Have they ever had any problems with their hair or their skin? Are there medical conditions that you need to know about? And you can have fields for the customer to type in a response or even check boxes to say this particular allergy and this particular allergy or even simple yes, no questions. So these are all customizable in this field. You can even change the order of the questions that you have by using control arrows. So let's actually go into a custom form for, in this case, the particular salon I was working with. So I will return back to the main page and I will go into the client information button. And on the right side, I'm going to go to forms. Now, I've already created a number of forms for this particular site. So if I wanted to go back and edit an existing form, I can just press the edit button on the right side. Normally, I would press create a form, but I'll edit one that's already in use. So at the very top, we'll give this form a name and we'll tell shortcuts. Is this form active, yes or no? There's a checkbox there. And should shortcuts retain the history of this form? So should it be saved in the client's information? And how many times does the customer have to fill out this form? Is it a one-time only form? Is it a standard release form? Is it a terms and conditions form? Or does the customer have to do one every visit or every few months? And then does the staff have to review this? Does the staff have to sign off with their own personal security pin in order to accept this information and save it? So on the left side of the screen, Shortcuts actually gives you a preview of what does this questionnaire actually look like. So we give you a sort of placeholder tablet. And every field that you see here, from first name to the header, these are fields on the right side that you can tell shortcuts to insert. Shortcuts client fields. Any information that you currently have in your actual shortcuts point of sale system is available for you to insert automatically. So first name, last name, mobile number, if I were to insert those shortcuts client fields, then when you bring up a client card for an existing customer and you ask them to ask the customer to fill in this information, this information, first name, last name, mobile, will already be on the form. It is then the responsibility of the customer to fill in the rest of the fields. What is your email? Do you have an Instagram account? What is your birthday information? Things like that. So if the customer provides an email, a birthday, birth month, or even birth year, all of that information will be saved in their online client card, and it will also synchronize back down to their shortcuts point of sale client card and then address and then information about the last services that they had so you can customize that form where it says extra form details this is where you can tell shortcuts do i have a statement display text that i want to have or a header do i want to create a multiple choice window or a number Let's say you're rating something from one to 10 or one to three. You can create number questions. And these are very user friendly. Once you have your form created on the left side, you can actually tell shortcuts, I'm going to change the order of the questions by clicking that particular row and telling shortcuts, move this row up or down or delete that row altogether. This form is very, very easy to work with and you can create as many forms as you need. There was a spa uh, late last year that I was working with, and they actually had, I believe, seven different forms or nine different forms that we helped them create. 
because they have a number of very specific services. So there's no technically no limit for you. But of course, you always want to have your basics here. So then once you have your forms, how does Shortcuts give you access to put that information in or to have the client fill it in for you? So if your staff had access to client information, so they would go to the particular site and Shortcuts will ask them to enter their security pin. Now, in this case, I do not think I have a security pin for this site. Pretty sure I don't. I'm going to try one. I probably don't. Oh, I do. So that's uh, one of the secretaries or one of the employees there, front desk, I think. So I'll search for a customer, and it just so happens that I'm a client on this computer. So once we're here, whether I had my account created there in the salon or whether I created an account because I made an online booking. My information is now available for them. On the right side, you've got two different buttons, select client or employee mode. If I was a staff member and I needed to update the contact information, email, cell phone, things like that, I would press employee mode. If instead this customer had to fill out one of your custom forms, you're going to tell Shortcuts, select this client. And on the following window, Shortcuts is going to say, okay, am I making an appointment for you? Is this for a particular service? Is this a, a category that you have or should have access to? So this is where I would fill that information. Now I'm going to go back. Because you notice Antoinette, the employee that we just logged in with, she does not have permission to access too much information. She can see anywhere and she can see client information and that's it. So she probably doesn't have many more permissions past that. And I'm going to check right now. Yep, she's she has appointment operator but not necessarily client information card access. I'm going to temporarily elevate her permission. So I'm an administrator, I'm allowed to do that. So again, I'll put in my super secret security pin. I'll look up a customer and I should have a little bit more information for them. There we go. So now that this employee has the ability to access client information card, you notice I have two more buttons available, photos, history, and notes. So photos, you can actually use your tablet to take a photograph of a customer so that it'll save it on the online client information card. So if you want to take a before and after photo, absolutely go for it. History and notes. So if this was a receptionist or this was a stylist and they wanted to record history notes on today's visit, what was my color formula? What were the other notes I'd like to save? I can enter that information here and shortcuts will save it into the client card. If this customer had to complete a form. On the bottom right corner, I now have the ability to go to form history. So these are the two that I've already completed, the guest form and the hair extension waiver forms. So I could go into one of these in case I needed to update this information. So I had to agree to the terms and conditions. I signed it using my finger on the touchpad and then I went to save it. And of course, to confirm it, shortcuts will always let me uh, or let the staff member confirm it. So if I were to press edit client, then this would be the staff is going in there and is making some adjustments. If I were to go to client entry, then it returns back to the list of potential forms. So I've already filled out the guest form and the hair extension waiver forms. But if I need to go to the client information form and fill that out, I can now select that form. So then this is where I would hand the tablet to the customer and the customer would fill in the rest of the information, perhaps opting out of email or opting into email and then pressing done. Oh, can't forget to enter the information I'm supposed to or I'll cancel out of there. Okay. And 
put in my pin again. So your client information is protected by default. So only staff members that have certain levels of permission are allowed to access this particular window or to bring up the forms. So back to our PowerPoint. So you can create your own custom forms. And again, to select them, you're going to the client information link. You're choosing your particular site. You're entering your PIN. And then you're going to client entry. And then choosing which form they have to select. So of course, the customer fills in the form. And you can either have it set, either have it set so that shortcuts will just save it and add it to their client information card, their online client information card, or make sure that an employee verifies the form is complete before it saves it by entering their security pin. So once the customer has forms, once they've completed a number of forms, their client history button will actually show a timestamp for every form they've completed and any notes that a staff member put against that form. So that is your online CIC. Again, not every site may necessarily use it, but if you're a spa, if you're a salon with a number of complex services, it would absolutely make sense to set up these forms. So for the business, we've talked about staff having permission to look at their schedules and appointments. We talked about staff having permission to access client information and even creating custom forms. But on the top end, the owners, the managers, they need to see how their business is trending. So in the console, there is a button called scorecard. Your staff usually never sees this button. It's completely invisible to them. So on the console, scorecard is actually dynamic. It will change. There's a little photograph associated with your scorecard, and it will change from month to month. So the scorecard actually generates data at the end of each month, and it will show you how did you perform the month previous. So uh, don't expect to go in here and see real-time data. If you wanted to see real-time reports, this is where you would access cloud reporting. If you want to see how your business is trending, this is where you would access scorecard. So you have a number of major categories that the scorecard reports on. Revenue, transactions, visits, clients, and online bookings. If you are a brand new site to shortcuts, the first month or the first two months that you have the scorecard, you may notice that the reports, the screens, don't have too much information. And that's because Shortcuts has not run long enough to spot a trend. You haven't yet recorded enough transactions. You haven't recorded in enough online bookings or customer visits so that Shortcuts can give you an accurate representation of how the business is trending. So what does it actually look like? How do you read the icons? So in the scorecard, once you're in there, you're gonna have a thumbs up button a thumb sideways button, or a thumb down button. So this is showing you if your KPI, your key performance indicators, if for online bookings, for example, if you had greater than 5% growth on that month, then you're gonna get your thumbs up. If it was up to 5%, so really there was no change in your online bookings, then you're gonna get that sideways button, the orange button. And if your key performance was less than the same month last year, it's going to be negative or the thumbs down. So it's showing you how is the trend going from month to month and year to year. So the scorecard is designed to track monthly, yearly, and averages. And these are averages against yourself, against the industry. So if you are a multiple site location, you can actually compare how you're doing against other of the stores that are in your community. So this is available in what's called the community dropdown 
on the top right corner of the screen. We'll see this actual window in just a second. So that's if your business belongs to more than one community. So we'll go back and we'll see this in real time. So we're back in the scorecard, actually back in the console, I should say. And I'm going to one of our shortcuts salons. So we have a test environment. Oh, I got to log in as an administrator again. Bear with me just a moment. There we go. So I'm going to go to my company. I'm going to go to shortcuts. There we are. And I'm going to go to my console. So right away, that picture that I have on the top center where it says scorecard, this picture is dynamic. If you log into your online console and you've been using shortcuts for a few months or a few years and you see a dark stormy sky with lightning bolts, that's bad news. That means the majority of my key performance indicators are trending down. So if that happens, I need to click on the scorecard and take a look at what's happening at my salon or my particular salons. So it takes a second for shortcuts to actually show you this information. It's pulling in your averages. So the main screen right away tells you how you're performing from month to month. If you see a cloudy sky, that actually means neutral data. You are neither performing up or down from your month to month. You're just averaging about the same. So this would normally be a bunch of sideways buttons. And if you log into the console and you see a bright sunny sky, then it actually shows you, there we go, shortcut to USA. If you see a bright sunny sky, then that means the majority of your key performance indicators are trending up. So that main picture that you see from the console, that actually changes from month to month. So just pay attention to the picture. So this cloud, for example, that just means neutral data. I'm not going up or down. All right, and let's go to Tim's test site again. There we go. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that information to generate, because this is one of our test ones, and if our staff is not constantly checking customers out, there's not really much to report on, which might indicate why we're having a downward trend on our practice database. And let's move this over. And what do my scorecard numbers tell me? Right. While I'm waiting for this to generate, if you have any questions on any of the three things we've talked about so far, now is a good time to ask. So are there questions on setting up staff accounts, questions on creating custom forms, or questions on the scorecard? And of course, since this site doesn't have any information, there's really nothing to track yet. So these, again, are your six categories. We'll go back to the main page. Okay, so that actually takes me to the end of this morning's presentation. So if you're not currently using your console, if you're not taking advantage of all of the features that you have, now would be an excellent time to at least give your staff permission to look at their appointments for that week. So today, we've learned how to set up anywhere for your staff, how to set up digital forms and the client information card. So we've learned how to access customer information, even the ability to, other than complete, complete a form, to take a picture and save it into their client card, and how to track your business, your performance from month to month using the scorecard. 
So we always have other webinars that we're presenting, not just us, but our overseas partners. They help us put together some presentations. So make sure you sign up for upcoming webinars, for our cloud services, for other shortcuts point of sale trainings, and any webinars that we've done in the past are available on our list of webinars. So we do have a library of those. I'll open up the floor for any questions. I'll give you just a moment. And I'm checking on the right side. If anybody does have questions, I'm checking the chat window or the questions bar. And I think nobody has any questions today. So we'll go to the next window. Oh, somebody had a question. Uh, Daniel has a question. Can the client information card be printed? Ah, so let's jump back. So the online client information card. If we were to go there, and again, I'll put in my super secret security pen. From this window, I really only have the ability to record that data, to save it. There's not really a button on here that says print. If I needed to print a client information card, I would actually have to do this in the shortcuts point of sale. The fastest way to do this, you actually have, I would consider two equal ways. Uh, Rob, for example, if I need to print his client information card, I can right click on Rob's appointment and go CPC, Client Profile Card. So that will have the customer's name, contact details, and their last three history notes for the staff member. So if George was doing some hair color and perhaps he wanted to get his formula, you could just right click and go to CPC. The other way to do that is to double click on the customer and go to his history at the bottom of the screen. So maybe George doesn't need too much information, doesn't need contact details, literally just needs a color formula. We could go to history and from this window, choose the particular visit note and print it up. So these features are not necessarily available in the online client card. This is the actual shortcuts point of sale. Other way to print that up, if you had a lot of appointments, for a staff member that day. So we'll pretend that George is going to do a bunch of services. And he's just super busy, back to back to back services for most of the day. So I can double click at the very top of the screen where George's name is and tell Shortcuts, I wanna print his schedule and the client's profile card right from here. And to save paper, I can select a little checkbox on the bottom left corner. I want you to print his schedule and the client profile cards on receipt paper. So every one of these appointments that George has, they would each have their own little piece of receipt paper. It'll have the customer's name, number, the service they're receiving, and their last three history notes. So I could just leave a stack of tickets at his desk or his chair. All right, I hope that answers the question. So that's how you would print it up not necessarily a feature that's in the cloud, at least not yet. Okay, uh, then Daniel has a follow-up question. Would I know the password that you give the employees when you give them access to their appointment book? No, when you create an account in the online console, the, and I'm going to log this staff member out, you do not see the password that is generated. When Shortcuts emails the staff member, it's a random password, so you don't see it. As an administrator though, you do have the ability to reset their password in case the staff member forgets it. So in this case, I would log myself in as an administrator instead of Antoinette. Now the pin 
same rules with the pin. You don't have the ability to see their pin. However, you can always log into the shortcuts point of sale and reset the employee pin. That is the specific pin that shortcuts is looking for. Okay, now I'm actually logged into the shortcuts point of sale. Okay. So that should answer that question. So you do have the ability to reset their uh, password, but you don't see what the password is. So I'm gonna go to manage users so you can see. So if I were to go to Tim, for example, so Tim was a staff member and he accidentally forgot his password or we need to reset it, I can just press the reset button and Tim will get an email with a brand new password. Now, if Tim had tried his password multiple times and was locked out, it would actually show up on this window. It will say Tim's locked out, in which case I would have to edit his account. And from this window, there's a little checkbox in the center of the screen that says Tim's locked out. I would have to make sure I uncheck that before I press save or reset password. Okay. Are there any other questions with regards to permissions or anything else we covered this morning? I'll give you a moment. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna reset Antoinette's permissions. No, I don't think we have any other questions. So we're going to wrap up this presentation and my Outlook calendar is reminding me that we're about to start another meeting in just a moment. Okay, so back to the presentation. So as always, if you think of anything after this presentation, you can always email us, education at shortcuts.net. We are always checking our social media. So if you post a question on Facebook, we will get back to you. And of course, you can always reach us on our main line or even our help desk line. And that's 24-7. Uh, so thank you all for attending. I hope you learned something new about your Shortcuts Online services. Hey, Freddie, Freddie logged in. Uh, thank you, Freddie, you're, you're always kind. You have a great day yourself. So everybody that attended, thank you for your time. We always have a different topic every Monday morning. So if you always think of something that's new, something that we haven't covered, you're always welcome to message us and we might turn it into a presentation for Monday morning. All right, have a great rest of the day and a great week. And I look forward to seeing you again uh, next week. Bye.